taking you to Bordeaux today where I'm meeting with Sarla Terpstra, an American Indian who lives here in Bordeaux and who shares French-inspired and plant-based recipes on her Instagram. We met online when someone recommended her book, Vegan French Favorites, to me, which I have used to cook for our guests here at La Source. Today, we're going to cook two of the recipes from this book, and we're starting with a plant-based version of one of France's classic dishes, Sol Meunière. It really means the miller's wife style. Okay. And it's just a simple concept of dusting with um, dusting something with flour okay. or frying in butter. So uh, the reason I chose this recipe for my cookbook is because it was supposedly Julia Child's first uh, meal or favorite meal in France. I'm not sure, one of those two, but it oh, um, yeah. definitely was a Julia Child thing. Um, and it also, I chose it because it's very easy to make whole food plant-based with very few equipment and ingredients, and it's delicious. It's been one of the most popular recipes in my cookbook. Yeah, so, and it's often made with a, with fish, right? With yeah, and the original would be, so as you can see here in my picture, this looks like a slice of fish, at least yes. I, I think it does. Yeah. Um, so it would be, you know, fish. You could put potatoes on the side. Um, uh, I'm going to make potatoes in a salad to go with it today. Some fresh lemon juice, parsley. Okay, so you peel it. Yeah, I'm going to trim the ends never, off. I've never peeled uh, an eggplant. Yeah, it's kind of a pain, but for this recipe, um, it works better because otherwise when you try to cut into it, uh, it tears the, the piece apart. I usually like eggplant peel, but for this recipe, for getting it to have that kind of texture of a slice of fish, it's better without the peel. So now I'm going to stand this up and cut it into four slices. Try to make them even. I always think this is so hard. Yeah, it is. To do that correct and have really nice looking slices. It is. It's tricky, for sure. Especially because eggplant is not even all the way up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to draw the water out of the eggplant before baking it. So I'm going to sprinkle it with salt on both sides, which will help draw out the water. And we'll just let that sit for a little bit. I'm going to batter the eggplant slices now in the meunier style. So we're going to mix together flour. You can use gluten-free flour if you're gluten-free. And garlic powder and onion powder. About a half teaspoon of each. I was so happy when I got your cookbook because you taught me to, I never use those, but they bring so much flavor. I learned that from yeah, you. I'm happy to hear it. I, uh, I do think that they can because they're, you know, they're more, they mix better into um, a batter, so. I can see that. Okay, we're going to add water and about a teaspoon of oil and just mix this. Um, so and then you don't rinse them, so you just put that I'm, salt on? I'm actually just going to take a towel and just pat them to get out okay. some of this liquid. Okay. The longer these sit, the more liquid you're going to draw out and the more um, the texture is going to be chewy and um, the faster they're going to bake, but uh, any water you can get out is good. So I'm going to now just rub these eggplant slices with the batter, coat them on all sides. It's one slice, depending on what sides I have and how full I am. Yeah. We're just going to make very simple uh, potatoes and salad to go with our uh, eggplant. I can't think of anything more French than potatoes and salad. Yeah, and exactly. I always find little slugs and little bugs after I on my counter after I buy a salad. Yeah. People aren't used to finding those in vegetables anymore, yeah. but it's very natural. Like you would get spinach from a real farm. You don't want to know what you find in there. Lots of protein. <laughs> Lots of protein. <laughs> Yeah, I've gotten used to it. When I first moved to France, I was like shocked the first few times because everything's so sanitized in the States. Yeah. Even at the organic markets, you won't really find that. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen it much, even at the farmer's market in the States. Everything's very clean. Cheers. Voilà. Voilà, then. Thank you. <laughs> 
head good? Yes. Um, <laughs> maybe take it like somewhere. Yeah. So calming. But like like with brown. Okay. Then I have to preheat my oven to one. Do you know how I found your cookbook? Somebody recommended it to me on Instagram. Oh, who recommended it? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, that's funny. What I love about um, tart tatin is it's so simple. It's just caramel, caramel, and apples, really, and some yeah. pastry. And but, butter and pastry. Yes, and for me, olive oil. But you could do vegan butter, and it would be really good. I think you need a little bit of common sense with cooking. Did you struggle with that making your recipes? Because I struggle with that, thinking I well just to taste or as yes. much as you like, or just look at the texture and add a little more water if you think it needs it, but for a recipe. I do struggle with that. I, yeah. I do try to be as clear, as direct, as precise as I can, but there are times when it's impossible. We all have different ovens. The apples are going to be a different size in your kitchen than they are in mine. Um, so you do have to use your... It's a science, but it's also not a science. <laughs> yeah, and it's also trust. Just trust yeah. your own intuition, intuition. and what you feel. And, and if it fails, is what I've I had. You probably have too. Oh yeah, so, so many, many times. things that fail. So many. <laughs> you just try again, and then, you, then you figure out your perfect way of making a specific recipe, right? In fact, when I follow a recipe to a T, is often when it fails because I wasn't using my own wisdom along the way. Yeah. Going okay in their kitchen, this worked, but I have a different oven. I have. Um, you know, different ingredients here. So I'm going to peel and quarter these apples. And what I'm making is an apple tart tatin, which is like a caramelized upside down apple tart. It's yes. delicious. Delicious. <laughs> yes, we are being picky on how you place them because that will determine how nice it looks, right? True, comes exactly. Out, this yeah. is going to be the bottom is going to be the top. Yeah. I fr I'm going to cook the apples a little yeah. and then I'll use some olive oil for that. Okay. But just the, the sugar top that's going to go right here. It's just um, sugar and water. It's just a, a quick sauce. Uh, okay. I'm going to add just a little splash of water to this. And I'm going to melt this. I'm going to have to be very quick. The minute it melts, don't want it to burn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. As you know, sugar burns very quickly. So yeah. the minute it's all bubbly and melted, I pour it directly into this. Into thing. the dish. Yes. You want it caramelized, not burnt. And as you can see, it, it starts melting instantly. And how much water? Is that, like a tablespoon? Yeah, I did about half a, a teaspoon of water. Um, just to give it a little push. <laughs> get it going. And you keep stirring. I do. Did you use brown sugar? Or? Actually, this is casanad, um, yeah. Just casanad. Which actually is nice because it gives it even more of a color it so melted. when you feel it's not not getting liquidy you just yeah. add a little more water yeah you don't want to add too much water to ruin the flavor of the sugar yeah water it down but we want this to be able to harden really yeah that's that's a good point okay that's where i'm going to take it off okay because it's fully bubbled and I'm going to pour it directly into here and it's going to harden immediately so we want to just yeah because the dish is not warm yeah exactly I actually in my cookbook I say to put the dish in the oven uh beforehand yeah but I'm currently using my oven to make the money yeah so that's okay now is spreading it all around into the pan so that it will create a nice even topping on the apples so now we're going to get the apples ready in my cookbook, I have a recipe to make the dough, the puff pastry dough for the apple tart tatin at home by yourself, but it's a lot of arm work. It's an yeah. arm workout. So today I am just using a store-bought store puff pastry, yeah. which you can, you can easily find vegan usually. It's made with oil instead of butter. Actually, I'm not as healthy as my cooking always is. <laughs> I, <laughs> I do that because I am really passionate about health food, but I, I will occasionally, you know, have yeah. my... Um, well, you have a child. Yeah. You have your job, yes. your work. Your, yes. I mean, yeah. I eat frozen vegetables. I eat canned beans. I mean, I'm not like a homesteader or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. What I love about your book is that you're not using, I call them almost fake foods. Mm -hmm. Like when you find, you want to find a plant-based alternative, you have so many 
creative options in there. I, I yeah. was very impressed when I was going through the book that I saw so many solutions to, oh, how would you, how would you make that plant-based? And instead of going for the processed alternatives, like yeah. fake meats and fake yeah. stuff, you've used like fake cheese. Yeah. You've used, I don't know if I'm offending anyone saying fake cheese and stuff, but you've used other creative things to still get the same effect. I really like that. Yeah. And uh, that's actually, that's because that's how I eat. I like real food. Um, and that's what makes me feel good. Yeah. And real food is beautiful. It's colorful. It's nutritious. Um, and what I like about using real ingredients, this is more creative. You can, you can come yeah. up with new dishes. If you're just substituting vegan sausage for real sausage, yeah, it's kind of the same dish. But when you substitute a carrot, let's say, or some plant-based ingredient, then it's like a whole new dish. And that's kind of fun. So, and I'm going to put the apples in here, just using olive oil. I'm going to brown these apples up a little. I cook them a little longer, covered ahead of time before baking them. So they yes, because that way they don't... Um, that way the liquid's been given out already before you stick it in the oven. Okay. And uh, that's what I found in my recipe is that they, the, the tatang comes out a little bit nicer. Uh, yeah. And more caramely and sticky instead of go like gooey, watery. Okay. A mushy. Just some of vanilla. Just kind of eyeballing this. And you can use, you know, fresh vanilla if you want. I'm just using vanilla extra. Let them just cook for a little bit until they soften. That way, also, they don't give off too much liquid when you're baking. Oh, yeah. So you can hear it. It's nice and hard. Yeah. So now we're just going to layer the apples in there, rounded side down. And that's going to be the top. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're nice and brown. Yeah. It's going to be very good. They're hot, I guess. No, yeah, they are. But I'm can you touch one of those people who just uses my fingers. Full, if you can. Yeah. It's easier. That's, that's the key. Um, my mom always did that, too. I don't think she has any feeling in her fingers anymore. Oh, really? I, I always joke about I don't know for sure, but the way that she would always just use her hands, I think it's kind of an Indian thing to do, too. Is it? So, they, so were you raised with, with traditional Indian cooking? I was, yeah. My mom is Indian, so and my dad's American. Um, and actually, my dad's background ancestry is Dutch. That's why my last name is Terpstra, yeah. which is very Dutch. It's very Dutch, yeah. <laughs> I know, I've had a few Dutch people go, oh, and try to speak to me in Dutch. I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to put the puff pastry on top. It's still oh, kind of thick. Have you pushed push them over and under the apples? Like I usually push, I push them around the edge like that. So I just kind of make it snug. And the more puff pastry, the better. So it's okay that this crust is a little bit <laughs> folded up. To let some steam out while it yeah. cooks. Exactly. So it doesn't puff up with the, so it stays mm, flat on yeah. top of the apples. That's our tartar tam. Actually, these are not And the thing
thing is normally it should be a nice short pan. So yeah, so wait, yeah. This has further to fall. So let's see. This works. Oh, oh not, too, not too bad. Okay. And so then you just do? put them back. Even Julia Child says this. She goes, oh, you just put it back. Nobody, if people haven't been in the kitchen, they wouldn't even know. Ah, put that right on top. Thank you so much, Sarla, for inviting us into your home and for sharing these recipes with us. If you want to follow Sarla, you can follow her on Instagram. She shares so much inspiration on plant-based French-inspired cooking. I am quite sure that you will love it. You can also find the full recipes of what we cooked today in the description box. And if you're interested in more cooking videos, I suggest you watch my playlist of all the videos in which I cooked a wonderful home-cooked meal. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.